Hey friends, so today we learn how to do a retopology of a simulation that we did in Marvelous Designer. So what we'll do, first we'll check the UVs, how they are laid out. So we'll just do a default arrangement according to our 2D patterns. Now what we'll do now, the task that we have to do is we have to first export the hoodie. As you see, it's in a 3D state. It's wrapped over our model. So we'll just export it. So we'll just export it as in a 3d how we see in 3d windows so now we'll exporting it so i'll create a new folder and in this folder i'll just rename it and i'll give a name to the obj file that we are exporting so now it's getting we now we have exported it and we'll make it as unweld and we'll just export it so we'll make it unweld, we'll switch on this UV coordinates very f and we'll export it. So now in the next step what we'll do, we'll just select all the patterns and we will convert it into a 2D pattern in 3D window. So we'll select now and we will right click on the 3D window and we'll rearrange as a 2D pattern. So now it's laid out as a 2D pattern. Now when we'll export it, so it will be shown in Maya as it is, as we see in the 3D panel. So now we are exporting is as a new file, as a new OBJ. Again, all the settings will be same and we'll just press OK. Unveiled and all unified UVs. So whatever we are exporting, all these meshes have a same UV layout. So the UVs are main for this process for retopology. Now we'll select all and <clears throat> now we'll see how much dense our mesh looks. So to make it more less dense, we can just increase our particle distance. Now I'll increase the particle distance to <clears throat> According to my need, I'll just up the particle distance and now see the density. So now with this density, we can easily do a retopology in Maya. So that's why we are keeping that much of particle distance and we will delete all the internal lines in this step so that we you see on the screen there is some what you say multiple vertices on the part where there are internal lines. So we'll delete all so that it should be a very clean mesh that we get get from here. So see, as I'm deleting, that mesh is getting cleaner. So all the mesh is now cleaned up. All the extra mesh is gone after I have deleted the, what you say, internal lines. So now, uh, yeah, last this is left. So I delete that too. This also delete. Checking again, any, other line left no i don't think so so now we'll again select all the patterns and i'll export it so again i'm testing with the particle distance i made it more higher so that more less mesh i have to do the retopology so i'll just export it so I'll give another new name to it. So we will be continuing with our Maya. So in Maya, I've imported all the meshes. So this, what you see is the particle distance that I've low higher particle distance that I've exported from Marvelous. So now I'll select all the edges and I will merge it. And now I will delete all the remaining edges that I've, by selecting all the vertices, I'll just remove this also. Now what I'll do, I'll do a manual retopology on this 2D mesh that we have exported from the Marvelous Designer. So I will keep in mind that I should not delete any of the edge vertices because they are interrelated to the other parts of the mesh. So 
when we will convert into a 3D mesh, then all will coincide. So that's why we are keeping the original vertices intact. So I am just using the outer vertices and creating the inside mesh. It's not a very long process, yeah, but it helps a lot in keeping the mesh very clean. So when you will go through this process, it will be very helpful to keep a very clean mesh and do all the detailing that we need in the further stages. So just have a look how I'm doing it and you can follow the same way. There can be many tools that you can use while doing this retopology. So I use this cut polygon tool uh, for all my retopology. So it's on your choice. It's just we have to keep all the edge vertices intact so that we don't have to do any much manual work while combining all the mesh together. So now I just select the right side mesh, duplicate it, duplicate the faces and just negative scale it. So the left side part is automatically made. Now I'll be merging the two parts together and be deleting the other half. So just see all the vertices are coinciding properly. So now I'll just delete the other half and I'll merge it together. And just merge the center vertices. And if any vertices is not, so I'll just manually merge it. And now, when all vertices are merged, I'll just check if any of them is open or not. If someone is, some vertices is open, I'll just merge it and check it. And now, I will just average out all the internal vertices by selecting all the vertices and decreasing the selection and just averaging out the vertices. So it's a very clean, even spaced mesh. So now, I will just duplicate it and negative scale it and just put it for the inside faces. So here what I've done, I've used the same mesh and just easily I can retopologize by duplicating it. So see, I am duplicating here also for other parts also. See, all the vertices are equally coinciding. So we can do like this also for a quick retopology. The things in the Marvelous which we kept as symmetry can be also retopologized very easily by this using. So we don't have to again and again do a retopology of a same kind of part that is a symmetric one. I'm just deleting that all the retopology has been done. So I'll just delete all the things. So I'm deleting all the things that are not needed in the scene. So right away I have deleted it and you can see all the retopologized meshes there and I'll just merge all the retopologized parts. All are looking very clean. And now what I'll do, I'll just transfer the UVs. Actually, when we retopologize anything, the UVs are disturbed. So what I can do is now with the old, what you say, 
2D pattern, I can just transfer it onto my new retopology. So by using this transfer tool, I'll just transfer the UVs onto the new retopology. So you will see all the clean UVs are there now. So I'll just show, see, all the UVs are now reprojected and clean. So now when we have a clean UV that matches the 3D, uh, what you say, garment UVs. So now we can use this transfer tool again to transfer all the 2D patterns onto the 3D mesh. So I'm just renaming it. So I'll just keep a copy of it so that if in case something goes wrong, I, have, I will just have a copy and I can use it. So here some mesh was left behind that was a uh, five sided face. So I have just made it a four sided face and relax it again. And I have made a copy of the same. So that error must be there in the second part also. So I'll just do the same thing with the other panel also and just do a average out. Yep. So again, a very clean mesh is there with us. So I'll again delete the old one that I made a copy and make a new copy out of it. In now I will again do a transfer of the UVs. So in case if anything was not good after that addition of the edge. So I'll just recheck and I'll save the scene. I'll make a copy and I'll keep a copy of it so that if anything goes wrong while transferring UVs, I don't lose my data. So now I will do a smooth. So I can increase the polygon because when we transfer it onto a 3D, if the poly is less, then the transfer will not look good. So now what I'll do, I'll just select my 3D mesh and 2D both have the same UVs. So with the help of transfer UVs, we can just transfer. So yeah, now the 2D patterns have been transferred onto the 3D as a 3D mesh. And now you see we have a very clean topology with all the vertices of the panels that are matching nearly. So we will just try and merge the, uh, the places that are not merged. We will just do a merging of the vertices. So as you see, all the panels are now taking the 3D shape. So you can see somewhere the vertices are not coinciding. So I'll just check the UVs. So where the UVs got <coughs> distorted. So I'll just merge and merge the UVs so that UV is also clean. So I've just merged the UVs. So UVs are merged now. And I'll just select the top part. Actually, it's a two layer inside also the cloth is there. So I'll just select all the top parts, isolate it and just first merge the parts here. So this merging will take some time, uh, but if you do it very precisely, then it will be great and you will get a very clean mesh. So yeah, now I'm merging it manually. First I did a merge as per the tolerance, but now I'll do it manually where some vertices have le got left opened. So now I'll increase the tolerance. Uh, I'll just give a value of 0.2 to the tolerance so that the adjacent vertices get merged easily. See now it's all merged. So I'll repeat the same process for the whole cloth and keep testing by pressing 3. If any vertex will be open, we'll get a distortion there. So I've got a value of 0.2 and see it's working fine. So like this, we can do merging of all. So now we'll see some weird of artifacts. So what we'll do, we'll just triangulate at this part. So we just merge the opposite vertices and create an edge between them so that this 
type of jagginess is gone. So I'll show you the process. I'll just keep a copy and now, yeah. Now I'll just select both the vertices and merge them. So now you see that because of the triangulation, all those artifacts are disappearing. So I'll just keep on merging it wherever I'll see that. So I'll just keep on checking UVs also in between so that if there is any error, I can keep on fixing those also. Because in transferring sometimes some UVs are, uh, what you say, are, dip, are broken. So now I'll just see where all the triangulation is needed. I'll go on to triangulate it to make a very clean mesh and so that when I bake it, baking will be good. So I'll just assess by rotating the model and just keep on merging the vertices. So this is a great way to work with the garments. So this is a very efficient way of retopology. It's also very rig friendly. It's not only about clean topology, it's also very rig friendly. And when we'll do a sculpting in ZBrush after projecting all the details onto this, it will be very clean. Now, uh, now when you s I do all the triangulation, now the mesh will be looking like this. So I'll just make a copy of the UV and rename one UV set as Marvelous Designer UV. This UV will be used for transferring all the things from Marvelous onto our model. And this UV I'll use as a texture UVs. So they are not two UV sets. One UV set is same as the Marvelous one and one is for our texturing part. So the Marvelous UVs we keep just because if we give, give any changes in our Marvelous mesh, then we can easily transfer it on our low poly mesh with the help of the UVs. So these UVs are very helpful if we keep both the UV sets. So I'm just setting the UVs so that this mesh is ready for ZBrush work and baking and texturing. So this UV set is for texturing. So I'll just manually do some tweaking in the UVs. So it's a bit of equal spaced. It's look, it looks clean. If one keep patience in these like retopology in this part, it will be great. And this is a very good pipeline and now it's being used a lot in gaming industry. So one must keep in mind and it's a bit working with patience, but you should work it out like this only. So actually I tried to do some manual work, but it was not getting much space. So now I again did a UV layout and I'm just trying to set up things manually. Just keeping in mind the zero one space. Yeah. So I've got a good space to keep this part here. So now I have settled for this. Thank you.